More than 20% of children in South Africa suffer from stunting. This condition affects physical and brain development. Our next guest hopes to eliminate child stunting by 2030. Joining us is a medical doctor from the Grow Great campaign, Dr. Kopano Matlwa Mabaso. Thank you very much, doctor, for your time. Thank you for having me. And such incredible aims, 2030, that's 10 years away. Um, but let's start with the basics. So yes. what are the major contributors or causes of stunting? Yes, I mean, I think it starts with um, pregnancy, making sure that we take care of our pregnant women, that we support them, that we create safe and enabling environments for women to have a healthy pregnancy. And then in the early years of childhood, it's poverty and inequality, poor water and sanitation, that even if you are eating well, the child is not able to retain that food because of diarrhea and illness, as well as just... You know, women's, the way women live in South Africa, just the severe conditions they're up against. You know, women are often at the forefront of gender-based violence, poor workplace conditions, um, poor maternity leave, and all of those things combine and curtail to undermine the healthy development of children. All right, so the Grow Great campaign aims to educate parents and caregivers about proper nourishment, as you said, during pregnancy and specifically in terms of childcare. Um, what are some of the myths that make your work specifically difficult? Yeah, so I mean, I think I think it's one, the education bit is a big part of what we do, but also I think a myth is that parents just don't know. I think parents, they are structural barriers that make it really difficult to make good choices for your child. You might not have paid maternity leave, for example, and even if you want to breastfeed for six months, that's really difficult. But I mean, I think a common myth um, is lots of myths around breastfeeding. I think um, there's lots of good work that's been done, but there's still a lot of mixed messaging in communities, for example, that um, you know only HIV positive mothers, for example, um, must breastfeed which is, you know, breastfeeding is good for everyone. Breastfeeding is kind of the poor rural choice, and if you're rich and you can afford, you should formula feed. So there's lots of myths around breastfeeding. Um, eggs is a big one. So, you know, there's research to show that eggs are full of nutrition that is fantastic for young children and pregnant women, but in many communities, eggs are taken off the diets of young children and pregnant women. And so those, so those are some of the things that um, challenge your yeah, behavior okay. change. Obviously, as you said as well, um, access to different types of nutrition, uh, poverty, um, just access to, to different areas. I mean, someone living in an urban community might have completely different um, ideals or nourishment uh, goals for their child to someone living in, in a rural community. Um, but what are some of the challenges, more importantly, that stunted children will face? Mm. So if, if this is not addressed, mm. what happens to children? So, I mean, the, I mean, one thing to emphasize is that stunting, for the most part, is almost completely preventable, and that's why this is such a grave injustice, that about a quarter of our children are affected, and it has long-term consequences for children's health, their education, and their economic prospects across the life course. So stunted children are more likely to drop out of school, they're more likely not to perform well in school, they're more likely to be unemployed as adults, live in poverty in adulthood, and are also at increased risk of chronic diseases like diabetes and heart disease in adulthood. So it's really a travesty, because you kind of shortchanging, undermining children's potential even before they've had the chance to get into the race that is life and live, live a full and productive life. Mm. So looking apart from the poverty situation, yes. I know we have uh, a global emphasis at the moment on uh, green focus. There's a lot of um, contentious dietary issues mm. um, that are often conflicting. Sure. Low carb, high carb. Sure. We know um, that takeaways are bad. Yeah. But a lot of parents still have to resort to quick fixes sure. or quick meals. Um, some parents often enforce their dietary sure. choices on sure. their children. So how does stunting occur in in situations that are not necessarily generated by poverty? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, as you rightly say, it's a confusing context. There's lots of sort of mixed messages. There's lots of information. But, I mean, I think the very basics, a balanced, healthy diet is, is, is the building block, is the principle. And I think in many of our contexts, you know, macronutrient, so food that fills, macronutrient-rich food is often easily and cheaply available, right? You can give your child porridge. But actually the micronutrients that you get in vegetables and protein and in eggs are not as readily and affordably of, um, available. And I think that's the challenge for many households. Um, so, yeah, sure, um, there's, you know, from time to time a place for processed or fast food, you know, when you're in a little bit of a hurry. But for the most part, what you have in your home, what you can grow, more bunny worms, avocados, mangoes, eggs, those are foods that we should be including in the diets of children and should be supporting our communities and our families to be able to do that better. So that's quite a big goal of eliminating stunting by 2030. So what assistance do you need and what buy-in do you need? Not 
not only from government but from civil society as well? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot that can be done by all of us in society. So if we start at the policy level, I mean, we have a fantastic child support grant, but it's not at the food poverty line. So it's not actually at a level where you can purchase food that's nutritious for your child. So if we start there, and then we don't have any sort of support for pregnancy. So about a quarter of women in South Africa, when, are, when they are pregnant, go hungry. So already, despite their best efforts, this child is going to start at a back foot. So let, that's the policy level. Workplaces, you know, breastfeeding in the workplace is something that has, has provision in our labor law, but few employers do it. Few employers inform pregnant mothers that, you know, when you come back, you can breast, you can... Or create an environment exactly. that's conducive to exactly. breastfeeding. And then dads, you know, I mean, there's so much we can do as, as fathers, as mothers-in-law, as grannies to support pregnant women, new mothers. Mental health is a big challenge for many women during pregnancy and post-pregnancy. We have quite high levels of anxiety and depression around that time. And so looking out for your sisters, supporting them, a cup of tea, recognizing signs that somebody is struggling. There's a lot we can do. I and mean, we visit our website, growgreat.co.za. We've got tons of information, tips, um, because this is something that's really a missed opportunity. We're losing precious human capital in South Africa by allowing so many children, generation after generation, to be stunted. Absolutely. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, we've been speaking to Dr. Kopana uh, Matwa Mabaso uh, from Grow Great, um, and that's about the importance of awareness around child stunting.